another mystery box toolerinos I got this uh, tool haul from a supposedly haunted house uh, on my way home <laughs> the guy selling stuff actually gave me the box uh, to haul all the, uh, the tools home that I bought well just as I'm trying to film this uh, tool haul video from a haunted house a storm is blowing up and it's a little spooky that it should happen at this moment hopefully uh, this just blows over so the box is very well made and uh, we'll look at it a little more carefully after we go through the tool haul so let's get started There should have been a creaky haunted house door sound there. Alright, well you can see right away there is a Craftsman motor in here, ball bearings. It's got a uh, pulley on one side and the uh, bear shaft on the other. And uh, it runs, so I think it's pretty much like the other one I've got. This one looks a little more rough, but it's still functional, so I'm sure it'll work fine for me. What do we see here? Paper wrapped pencils, code red and code yellow. GB, China and Glass Marking, American Crayon Company, made in USA. So it's kind of like a crayon wrapped in a thin slice of papery, woody paper. There's just a few red ones left. But lots of yellow. One dozen paper wrapped pencils, American Crane Company. 1706 Hayes Avenue, Sandusky, Ohio. Cool. Another Ohio product. Next. Check it out. Stanley Saw Set 2525. That's not what I paid for it. That's the original price. I paid five. Oh, oh there's the five. New old stock. Pretty nice. It includes the manual, pistol grip saw sets, and the original purchase receipt, $25.25 plus tax, $26.39 at Wolf Hardware, wherever that was. And it's starting to rain. Alright, I want to get a good shot at this. From Stanley, the toolbox of the world, come bench planes, bevels, push-pull rules, zigzag rules, bit braces, breast drills, hand drills, miter boxes, saw sets, vices, try and miter squares. Huh, try and miter squares. Steel squares, chisels and punches, carpenter's chisels, gauges, hammers, doweling tools, screwdrivers, spoke shaves, levels, Stanley Shore Form tools, Russell Jennings bits, Yankee Fine Mechanics tools. For a complete list of tools, send for catalog number 34. Pretty cool. So it gives you instructions on how to operate this new design of saw set. Tells you how to make the adjustments. Saw set number 43. Got a Sheffield utility knife. Has lots of nice features. It says Sheffield on it. But somehow I doubt this was made in Sheffield, England. It's probably uh, the way Harbor Freight has products called Pittsburgh, but, you know, they're not made anywhere near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I got a Lutz 33 
fancy looking utility knife, has a patent number, so I'll look it up. Wait, breaking news, that's Lutz 88. Got a hide scraper. Man, what is it with me and scrapers? Got a small Craftsman wrench, 5 sixteenths. Got a weird bent tipped needle nose plier. Cornwell, another Ohio product. Awesome. I've got a little ladle. I'm not sure why I bought that. It says cream top. I think it's for, uh, for either putting in or taking out the cream on the top of a milk bottle, the old glass milk bottles. Pretty cool. Got a nice little Bridgeport stubby uh, number two Phillips. Craftsman. I've never seen one that looked like this before. Maybe I just don't get out enough, right? <laughs> but, uh, 11 sixteenths, both sides. But it says patent, but that is not a patent number. Unless it's a really old patent number. Made in China clamp. It was cheap. A buck, can't go wrong with that. When it's cheaper than Harbor Freight, you have to pick it up, right? Jones Way. Very shiny. Chrome vanadium. Feels like a very well made tool. Another Lutz, but this one's an 82. Got a wire gauge. Those are always cool. National Screw Manufacturing Company, Cleveland, Ohio. Cool. Ow. Just poked myself with that. Some kind of spring loaded center punch. Anybody know what that would be for? Besides stabbing yourself in the hand. Hey, what are you doing? This is my tool video. Get! Got an old nail set. I got a knife. Emperor Steel. No. Uh -oh. I feel another Crocodile Dundee line coming on. That's not a knife. Oh, well, that's a knife. <laughs> that's a big one. Another Jones Way, three eighths. A replacement uh, rigid pipe wrench, lower jaw, and uh, the threaded part, upper jaw. Pretty cool. NOS. And a nice old SK socket. Half inch six point. Can never have enough of these. Got an interesting hammerhead. One and a half. There it is. Iron City. Does that mean it's from Made in Pittsburgh? I don't know. I'm not familiar with that logo. If anybody knows what that logo means, please let me know in the comments. I've got another Dunlap uh, pipe wrench. The little brother to that giant Dunlap wrench that I've got. A metal tin, a metal case. What's in the case?
Pencils. Mostly construction pencils. That's a nice pencil holder. Wing nuts. Oh, can never have uh, enough wing nuts, right guys? I think we could all go in that bin. I don't know why I'm attracted to the old kitchen tools. I just am. Especially the can openers and bottle openers. It's just a nice old Echo made in USA. Echo Chicago USA with a patent number. So I look it up. And then the big item. So it was March 25, but uh, he took 20 for it. Craftsman Chrome Edge, Chrome Edge Tap and Hexagon Die Set. Craftsman Tools sold only by Sears Roebuck and Company and Simpson Sears Limited. So it's got all your information up here about what drill to use. Hang on, i got to hold this up. Hold this down. And then it's got all these Made in USA taps. And it even has the, the thread gauge. And, uh, you know, it's not a super high quality set, but for what I do, I think it's it'll be a nice addition. And what's underneath? Oh! <laughs> All the dies, and again, everything looks barely used, if anything, maybe one or two of them were used, you know, once or twice. Start from this side, good advice. The thread gauge says Craftsman, and here it says uh, Made in Germany, which is interesting. All the rest of the tools in here say Made in USA. The outer case says made in USA, but the red parts, actually, it's easy to read on the other one, but the red parts say made in Norway. So, this is like step one of globalization, I think. We've got most of the tools made in USA, something made in Germany. The outer case made in USA, but then the trays are made in Norway. So, just an interesting combination of uh, sources for these parts. Now, did I say that was the big item? It was the most expensive item. The last item I'm about to show you, I worked for. I literally worked for the tool because he was closing up when I pulled in. And he was putting everything away, and I said, uh, do you need some help? I'll work for tools. <laughs> and at first he said no, but then he changed his mind and he said, all right, fine. So I helped him put a bunch of stuff away, and then he let me pick something out. And I picked this. Pretty neat. Almost looks like a little lathe or something, but it's a uh, Blue Point Abrasive Disc Trimmer. Made by Snap-on in uh, Wisconsin, Kenosha, Wisconsin. It's got this uh, brass measuring position here to say what size disc you have left after you trim it. So you put your disc over here and you can crank it to a different position here to a different uh, size. So this changes the center of your disc. And then this part, you tighten it down with this part here. It screws down over the cutter, and then when you crank this, it rolls the cutter wheel. And then it'll spin your disc around and trim it all to the same radius. So if you're using an abrasive disc and it starts to get a chunk out of it, or it starts to wear on one side and it's unbalanced, then you can put it in here and trim it off perfectly round again to whatever size is closest, I imagine, to what's left. You'll either have an 8, a 7, a 6, a 5, or a 4, or whatever in between. So, uh, pretty neat. It's cast iron, heavy duty. So, I imagine this was a special tool for maybe a body shop, or someplace where they would use a lot of abrasive discs. 
I need to keep them in uh, in round shape. <laughs> so, what do you think? Was it worth 20 minutes of actual work to uh, to work for that tool? I think so. It's super cool. All right, some things about this box. Uh, it's got these metal sides here that goes over the top to make nice handles so you can lift. The uh, hinges were nailed on, and uh, this is something Scout Crafter showed us a while back. The nails were cleated over. They were bent over and hammered down so they were cleated so they wouldn't just pull out. Because if you just drove nails straight in, uh, the load on this, uh, the hinges with the lid flopping back would just rip them right out. So the chain was broken. Uh, I put a little homemade link in there. Uh, using a piece of the uh, the Jiffy Pop wire. Yay! I have uh, an unlimited supply of these things. <laughs> so that worked well. And the box was originally American Sterilizer Company. But uh, look at the underside of this thing. It's got rails so you can slide it around and keeps it up off the ground just a very tough well-made box i think it's ready for some new hinges to be uh or at least this hinge needs bolts or screws instead of nails into the top when it was being opened and uh with the uh, chain broken it did some damage back there but it'll make an awesome box and makes a handy seat